Hey, what's up everybody? Patrick Bryant here. I'm going to bring you a video today on some creature design and concepts. And I'll be using a, um, a process that's similar to my speed painting video that I did, is that I'll be setting up some silhouettes. I'm going to do three of these guys. And this took about 45 minutes. It was recorded in real time. And I'll be making some cuts during the video just to kind of shorten things up a bit. So going into this uh, the only thing that I had in mind was that uh, I wanted to do some swamp creatures pretty random other than that then you know I just want this to be just kinda free-flowing just kinda uh, let things happen get a little bit messy with it no big deal and um, just have some fun with it so um, right now just filling in uh, the character with a little bit of line work and then eventually just fill it all the way in with a silhouette once I have the first guy finished I'll kind of use him as a sort of as a basis to create the next two guys off of. So this guy's body type is a little bit standard. And then what I'll do is um, for the next couple of guys, make one maybe a skinny type of guy and then one maybe a little short and round or something like that. So um, once I start this middle guy, I eventually use the scale tool just to kind of thin him out, make him a little bit taller. And you can always resize these things or whatever. So um, like I said, I'm, I'm painting on one layer. I like to do everything on one layer to start. I don't want to get, you know, I, I want this process to be just kind of loose, just kind of fun. So I don't get myself caught up into, you know, which layer am I painting on and all this stuff. So I just kind of just let things happen and just have some fun with it. So. And then once this guy gets filled in, then I'll, uh, I'll skip ahead here and the third guy already be finished up so the um, once I have the silhouettes all finished uh, what I like to do is uh, start adding in some different volume or uh, excuse me uh, different shades of gray just to add some volume to the character so they're not just flat and that's what I have right here so we've got all three guys done and what I'll do is I'll turn on the lock transparent pixels and what this will do obviously is it'll keep me it'll prevent me from painting outside the character I choose a, a lighter shade of gray and my soft airbrush tool here just to start adding some volume to it some shape just to start to uh, define this guy a little bit and um, just really loose I don't want to get um, too light with this I want to keep the shades of gray actually pretty close to each other I don't want any um, too high level of contrast at this point so um, creating creatures uh, to me on one level use um, when I'm doing concepts for creatures or something like that it's kind of easy so to speak in that um, you're designing something that actually doesn't even exist uh, so you know not a lot of rules apply so I'm not trying to you know draw a lion or anything or something like that where I need to be exact it needs to look like a lion this thing doesn't exist so I can just kinda of do whatever I want but at the same time, you know, even though something is, you know, a little bit, you know, a fictional character, that, you know, I still need to keep some certain things in mind. So I don't show it here in the video, but I had a couple of pictures of just some swamp and jungle, just to kind of just look at some trees and some vines and some different textures and stuff like that. And that's all I've really, that's pretty much the only type of reference that I use for this. But you want to keep some things in mind that even though you're creating something that doesn't exist you can't go too far with your imagination because otherwise you know you could turn your audience off and they can look at this and they you know they may not buy it and you want to keep your target audience in mind if I was creating these for a Saturday morning cartoon you know I would you know obviously make these a little bit more cartoony not mean looking or anything like that if um if I'm doing something like this for let's say a game like uh, Warcraft you know they may write a, a may fit that's sort of my style kind of a cartoony comic book style that's what I like so it may fit right in with that uh, but if I'm doing something for uh, Warhammer that uh, you know they get a lot darker and a lot more detail involved and stuff like that and so I can get a little bit more evil a little bit more dark so you do have to keep those things in mind even though you're designing something that's a little bit a little bit random, a little bit spontaneous. So, just kind of think about that. Just a couple things. Now, right here, what I'm doing is that um, I'm using the 
dodge and burn tool. I'm using the dodge tool here just to kind of lighten up his face. Just make things a little bit quicker. And when working in grayscale, it's the, probably the only time I use the dodge and burn tools because it's, I'm just working with just grays. And it's perfect for it just to quickly lighten things up and just keep the process moving along. And I just, um, I actually start using my character uh, as a color palette. Since different shades of gray have been created, then I'll start uh, just using that, just color picking from that. And as you can see here, I'm just uh, adding lines, just kind of scribbling it at random. Just will add a little bit of texture to my guy here. So to go back to a little bit what I was talking about before about the, um, you know, when you're designing a creature, when you're designing a fictional character, that uh, you kind of have free reign to be creative. Um, you can just kind of be pretty random and kind of crazy with it, but there are some things that you want to keep in mind. So we talked a little bit about the your target audience, so that could uh, determine the style a little bit. But um, let's just say, for example, you uh, you're designing this guy. You know, you're designing some creatures for a video game, a fantasy game, where the main character has to go into some type of swamp and fight and kill some swamp creatures. Um, you have to keep in mind that you know is the audience going to accept? Is it going to uh, is it going to believe that this guy is a swamp creature? So, if for some reason I put some bunny rabbit ears on this guy, you know, is my audience going to buy that? Are they going to look at that and say, well, that's kind of stupid? Um, so there are some hidden rules that apply when designing fictional characters, and that you know you have free reign to be creative, but at the same time you kind of have to keep in mind that is your audience going to accept and believe the character that's there and you know the environment's going to have a lot to do with that and things like that but you can't go too crazy you know when you're trying to think of oh, I want to create the next coolest greatest badass creature ever you know if I start putting things and add things onto this swamp creature that really don't make sense you know it might look cool um, you know if this these swamp creatures are from a primitive environment, you know, it's not going to make sense for them to have some some high-tech type of gadgets and stuff like that. So, yeah, you can be creative, but stay creative within your subject matter. And, you know, you can go far, but not too far. So, it's just a couple things to think about. And lastly, you know, it comes down to, you know, is the character appealing to it? So, think about your your audience. Are they going to accept it? Is it believable? And is it appealing? You know, that's the cool factor. You know, does this guy look cool? And what this process is just, if this is the beginning. You know, like I said, this took about 45 minutes. It's basically just an idea of what I want some swamp creatures to look like. So, from here, I can start adding things. I can use this as a foundation for some future sketches and some final rendered work. Okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, the specs of my image here. So, my canvas size is uh, 16 inches wide by 8.5 high, or 48 pixels by 2500, uh, of course working at 300 dpi. Uh, the main brush I'm using is just a basic hard round brush, and I have the um, under the brush tip shape, I have it set to a 7% spacing. And un under other dynamics, I have the opacity jitter turned off and the flow jitter set to pin pressure. And I have smoothing checked on. So I know I'm going to get that question. I get it all the time. And lots of people do about oh, what brush are you using. It's the basic brush. And if you've watched enough Photoshop tutorials, you keep hearing that more and more. Is that it's just the basic brush that's being used. Um, for the... Uh, dodge and burn I'm just using the just the standard airbrush and some of the uh, softer painting on top with the lighter gray that we did it there at the beginning so uh, getting started here on the second guy and just thinking about incorporating a little bit more of the environment so he's kind of uh, maybe a little bit more tree like so I've added some leaves and um, just be adding like some little pieces of log here I've got this thing going on on his head so um, like I said, this process is a lot of fun. Um, you know, starting at the beginning where I just said, you know what, just I just want to do swamp creatures. That's it. And from there, just kind of letting the painting just 
kind of speak to me and just kind of go based off of what I see. I'm just making up random stuff as I go. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It kind of feels like um, kind of like you're sculpting. I just keep adding layers of clay on top of a basic silhouette uh, using the eraser to um, go over the outer edges and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Just a fun process. And uh, definitely something that you can try yourself because, you know, I'm not worried about being exact. There's no exact type of detail or anything like that. It's just, a, as you can see, just a lot of scribbles just to get the idea across, just to, you know, get this thing finished. You know, if I had to show this to a client or an art director or whatever like that, we can just see, you know, just the ideas. And from here, we can go further. And then on this tree guy here, I'll be adding some, um, I'll add some leaves and stuff like that around his chest or whatever. So if you ever come into a situation where, you know, you kind of don't want, you don't know what to draw for the day or you're kind of having a hard time of figuring out, you know, your next cool is badass character or something like that. This is always a fun process, at least for me, to go to in that, um, you know, there's really no pressure. There's no pressure to be you know perfect or anything like that or have everything you know rendered all the way to the nth degree is that um, you know being a little bit random with it and being a little bit scribbly there's a sort of a cool feel about it it just kinda you know I, I kinda like that rough look to uh, digital paintings or speed paintings or you know even someone's sketchbook or something like that and that you know it's just kinda free flowing so sometimes I, I like to do these just as exercise just to you know just get the mind going and it's a good way to practice you know your creativity and you know your imagination needs practice just like um, you know if you're working out or playing a sport you know you need to practice to get better at it so I mean your imagination uh, and your creativity is the same way you know you want to treat it the same way just adding a little bit more scribbles here for some textures and using my eraser tool just to kind of carve things out a little bit and sculpt this guy to form. Um, in a little bit here I'm going to try using a texture brush that uh, that I had just made randomly a while back and it ended up, it ended up not uh, working out but during a process like this you know this is a good time to experiment with some different brushes and you know I tried it just trying to make some type of little bushy layer here or something and just to goof around and ended up not working I ended up just deleting it I was gonna cut this out of the video but I figured hey you know I'll leave it in there just so you guys can see that you know experimenting is totally fine this is when you do it sketching and speed painting stuff like that this is the time to experiment and to learn more about you know what your brushes are gonna do when you use them and you know what works and what doesn't work so that's always a good time to do it now at this point I've got all these guys separated on their own layer and what I'm gonna do is add some color to it using a um, an overlay layer and what I'm gonna do here is and you can use overlay or color or anything like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to control click on the layer of my character and it's going to make a selection of him so I don't paint outside of him on the overlay layer that's above. And just pick some random colors from this point. I'll use a, um, a little bit softer of an airbrush here and just start splashing on some colors. And just to get the feel of, you know, where these guys are. It's a swamp, so, you know, obviously we've got some green going on. And just another quick way to add to this type of painting it's just a quick concept and you know I don't need to go in here and smooth everything out or add tons of colors or anything like that it's just to get the idea across and as you can see the areas where it's the most it's basically white the most highlighted areas uh, really don't catch a lot of that color when using an overlay layer pick a little bit of a random orange here just to throw some more stuff in there and that's it you know I kinda got an idea of 
you know, some different colors of the environment that are going on, making this guy look a little swampy, a little creepy. So my second guy here, a little bit of brown for this little tree or log that's on his head. <laughs> and then um, I'll add some green in here for the leaves and trees and stuff like that that are all stuck to him. So as you can see, this is pretty fun. It's just a matter of just getting an idea across. Uh, you know, at this point, I can show this to someone and just say, hey, this is where I'm at. You know, they can pick one or two of these guys and say, okay, let's move forward and start designing some different characters to a more complete, a complete process of, um, you know, more of a cleaned up final rendering. And now I'll be adding in um, just a little bit of the, of the background on this guy. So I'll be finishing up the last guy and a link to the final image is um, going to be in the description. And I'll have this last guy uh, over on the furthest right. This guy I've got uh, kind of crawling out of the ground or the water or something like that. I have him all finished up. So um, any questions you guys have, please post them in the comments. Uh, you know, if there's something I left out. Uh, once again, this little process here is fun. It's quick. And it uh, doing something like this can really, um, well, at least it does for me. It uh, you know it, it just gives you a sense of accomplishment you know you don't have to take this to such a detailed final stage but you know it's finished for what it is and it's good to sometimes just you know start something and finish it you know sometimes long detailed paintings that take eight ten twelve hours you know sometimes during that process you get a little bit worn out you're just like oh man I still got a long way to go on this guy. You know, doing something like this quick, you know, first thing for me this is first thing in the morning that I can just say, hey, you know what? I started and finished something today. You know, I can post it. It's a little speed concept and, you know, make a little video out of it, have some fun with it or something like that. But, um, you know, good way to get a sense of accomplishment. So, like I said, these all, uh, the final image will be um, linked there in the description. And uh, I'll be posting some more videos like this in the future and do some different types of concepts and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you like it. And once again, like I said, send me any type of questions or anything to my mailbox or just comment on the video or something like that. Thumb it up if you like it. Thumb it down if you don't. Tell me why and just tell me what um, I could do better for future videos. So um, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, more videos hopefully coming more often soon alright you guys take care and I will see you next time